Hi everyone. So we're looking at the the final Mishnah of Chapter Nine of Mishnah Shabbat. Uh, so we're up to to Zion, and we're still dealing with this topic of things that one's liable for transporting. It has to be of a, a size and a quality, something that's significant that one would want to store, that one would want to keep, and one has a purpose for. So let's see this uh, final Mishnah. Hamotzi kupat harochlin afa pishi yesh ba minin harbe eno chayav elachatat echat. So one who takes out a, a peddler's basket, though it contains many sorts, is liable for one sin offering. So uh, while it might be in, in other cases, uh, the amount of individual things, if they fit a certain uh, quality and quantity, it can count as individual uh, sin offerings. In this case, because it's a collection of things that someone isn't taking out as a collection, because that's what they, they do, that's their peddler's basket, that's like their briefcase, uh, then it counts as one thing collectively. Zero ne gina pachot mikrigogeret, Rabbi Yehuda ben Betera omer chamisha. Garden seeds less than the equivalent of a of a dried fig, which is our usual measurement for for food things. So I guess it's uh, seeds for eating, perhaps um, the size of a dried fig. Rabbi Yehuda ben ben Betera says says five, so much more strict because presumably the size of a dried fig would be more than five seeds. Um, so that's the minority opinion of Rabbi uh, Yehuda ben Betera that it's uh, stricter. Um, zera kishu'in shnaim, zera delu'in shnaim, zera polamitzri shnaim. So cucumber seeds too, gourd seeds too, Egyptian bean seeds too. So for whatever reason that these are more valuable, uh, more special kinds of seeds, they have a much stricter opinion. It's not just the minority opinion of, uh, like in the last case, where we would hold by the, the majority opinion that it would be a fig and not the strict five seeds. Here it's just saying two seeds, this is the way it is for these things. Uh, no difference of opinion, so that seems to be the case the way it um, it's held. Okay, chagav chay tahor kol a a a live kosher locust, which is interesting because we don't eat locusts nowadays. Um, maybe in some communities uh, they still do, but it says it does say in the Torah we learned there are species of locusts that are that are kosher. We don't really, uh, I guess, know which ones. And so, in, at least in the Ashkenazi community, we don't um, eat them nowadays. But the, according to the Bible, there are some that are kosher. So, chagav chay tahor, kolshu, any, any size of a live locust. Mate, kigro garret. Uh, a dead one, though, it would be like the, again, like the dried fig, because a dead one, uh, assuming that it would be then therefore for the purpose of being food and not some other purpose that the live one might be for. Siporet um, karamim, ben chaya, ben meta. Uh, a bird of the vineyards, whether alive or dead, any size, for they store it for it's stored for medical purposes, so for something that's used for uh, a medicinal purpose, um, would uh, would be at, at at any size. Okay, as long as it's, it's if it's sufficient for being used for that medical purpose, then it has value, even if it's a very tiny amount. Rabbi Yehuda Omer. Rabbi Huda says, also one who takes out a live, non-kosher locust even, is liable uh, any size since they store it for a child to play with. So maybe it would be, a, uh, back in the day, uh, a pet for a kid. <laughs> a strange pet, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's what, uh, that's what they say here. That if, so then it has a purpose. If someone, someone wants it, someone wants to give it to their child. Um, and therefore... Uh, of any size would be a problem. Okay, good. So we'll stop there because uh, that's the end of the chapter and we'll begin with chapter 10 uh, next week. All the best. Bye.